Hey guys and gals, it's Logan Freeman and Alex Olson coming to you with another episode of the Kansas City Multifamily Minute. Uh, you can see here I'm a little dressed down today because what do you know, Kansas City just wins. You know, we didn't play very good, but we got it done and that's what matters. And so, Alex, did you watch the game yesterday? I definitely watched the end of it. You had to. Yeah, you know, I what I love about uh, the Kansas City Chiefs right now is, you know, it might not be pretty. It might not be, um, you, you know, what the game plan that you, you set out to set, you know, but they get the job done. And, you know, I, I was thinking about parallels between that and kind of commercial real estate. And I was thinking about like, you know, all the things that can go wrong in a transaction but if you have the right advisor on your behalf representing you that's been through it before we get the job done and so you know i was really just kind of uh ruminating on that before we were on this call because you know there's a lot of things going on right now and there's a lot of things that happen in transactions and so you know with the experience that you and i bring and our team uh, to the equation here, we get the job done. And we're going to be there because we've been there before. So we can kind of foreshadow things that are going to happen. What I wanted to talk about today, kind of on some market commentary, was, you know, where is multifamily at, right? Everybody is is tracking the, the rent trackers, and that's fine and, and dandy. But I wanted to get a little bit um, micro on this because Russ Gray was just on my podcast right before we got on this call. And Russ is an economist. He's a financial strategist with the real estate guys. They've been doing this since 1997. And they're always coaching people to say, look, real estate is hyper local. And so I pulled an article from the multi-housing news uh, you know, outlet. And I love this article because it's kind of debunking some myths that are out there right now. But they did say that there's fewer deals, but less distress. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. A multifamily has traditionally been a safe harbor for commercial real estate investors. I also follow the family office industry very closely uh, for a different business that I have. And uh, one of the allocations that family offices, which are the top of the top, are you know, uh, allocating to right now is commercial real estate. When all else fails, the American consumer needs a roof over their head. And for many, by choice or by necessity, that's what we've talked about before, renting by choice or renting by necessity you know, that's probably going to be an apartment. So meanwhile, leases are short, promising rent, you know, steady rent growth. And in Kansas City and select markets, rents are still increasing. And so the multi-housing news checked in with three industry leaders, one portfolio manager specializing in housing and two multifamily research experts to find out where the multifamily pain points have been. And since we're not out of the woods yet, what the, what could be coming in the next months? And so I love that because they're bringing in these experts, but then one of these guys or gals, I think it's a, a lady, it, it says, you know, 55,000 units she manages on the equity side. So there's a really good data point. And those panelists seem to be in agreement. The pandemic halted record high multifamily in investment initially, but trading and development have restarted and capital is available thanks to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Fundamentals, those struggling and changing in some markets and asset classes are relatively sound. That's not you and me peddling this. This is somebody from 55,000 units. And so, uh, you know, one of them said, look, those looking for distress are pretty disappointed so far, Rice noted. You know, and so one of the questions that we're going to cover today is, you know, how has investment activity recovered since the free fall earlier this spring? And we're seeing this too in Kansas City, but the pipeline of transaction activity is opening back up. There's a significant amount of capital. Some of it's still on the sidelines, you know, but a lot of it's back in the market. Russ Gray just earlier today said, I would rather think and do than wait and see. And then so in some markets, values are at pre-COVID-19 values. In some markets, we're seeing a slight reduction. In Kansas City, we're seeing a slight reduction. Not much, but a little bit. But those reductions are generally in that sort of the 2 to 4% range. So, you know, there's not a huge gap between uh, pre-COVID pricing, but there are sellers that are understanding what buyers have to go through right now. And that's what we're trying to bring you. So, you know, which regions are, you know, in which markets are struggling the most due to COVID-19? 
Well, they mentioned that Las Vegas and other hospitality-backed markets are struggling, but regionally, the Midwest is outperforming the country as a whole. There's a lot of variation within the other regions. For example, the West Coast, we find Seattle is doing better than California. In Texas, Dallas is doing better than San Antonio and Houston, although Houston is not doing as bad as a lot of people thought. The Southeast is a little mixed. You know, it's a region of the country that's been dependent on steady migration. And with the recession, that, of course, has slowed. But again, Las Vegas, Orlando, markets like that have struggled. The Midwest is really performing well. Just look at St. Louis. Look at Kansas City. Again, how has – so that's, that's the macroeconomic from, a, from a, you know, a high level. Then we get down to the markets. But then we're going to actually get down to the asset classes. So – in terms of the market fundamentals, class A is doing worse than class B and class C. Mm -hmm. Although it's not intuitive, class C is the best right now in terms of keeping a low vacancy. Vacancy in class C apartments has not moved since the beginning of COVID-19 and rents have actually gone up. So that might not make sense, you know, because we know there are some rent collection issues, but we also know that folks who lived in more affordable housing, they don't have a very deep cushion if they do lose their income but they're still working in a lot of these markets. So we understand that, you know, there's different classes inside of, of apartments in general. And Martha, who said, you know, they have 55,000 units across the, the United States. They started to track their occupancy across their portfolio and their collections daily so they could be proactive on the trends. And so what they've seen is, again, a decline in the occupancy on the Class A product. That's partly because you know, people are moving down into different asset classes, but also that's what was being developed. So, um, you know, in class B, that's where they're seeing the winner at. And that's what we're here to bring you today. And I know we continue to harp on the fact that the Midwest is holding up strong in comparison to the rest of the country, but the facts are the facts. What we focus on bringing you is class B multifamily and strategically located neighborhood retail shopping centers that have e-commerce resistant tenants. And those are performing well. More so the transactions are really starting to pick back up. Now, with all that being said, we think about the year here, okay? And you know, it typically takes 60 to 90 days to close a commercial real estate transaction. So if you're looking to make an investment before the end of the year, the time is now. Alex and I have off-market opportunities that are pre-vetted and additionally, we have the best in class relationships that are gonna help you get your transaction from point A to point B and point B being closing. The you know, point in fact is like, you know, a couple of our new 1031 clients that have reached out to us is, you know, we have a proven process, right? Three to four mm -hmm. steps, maybe a little bit more in there, but we're gonna be with you along the, the transaction process. We're finalizing a what to expect document. We should have that out to you hopefully maybe by tomorrow, if not next week for sure. But basically what we, we designed is a way to say, okay, let's have an introductory call. Let's understand your goals, your experience, your timeline, and what you're looking to accomplish. After that, we are then going to introduce you to the buyer representation success system or this BRSS system. And then along the way, we're going to have touch points, right? So every week or every week and a half, we're going to make sure, depending on where you're at in your transaction, that we are touching base with you to see, okay, here's the opportunities that we're going to put in front of you. Here's your timeline. Here's the underwriting. And here's the questions that you might have. And let's get in to answer those. But along that process, we're also introducing you to your new team or potential team here in Kansas City. That be lenders, general contractors, property managers, attorneys, whatever you need to get your transaction, you know, across the finish line, we're going to be building those relationships while we're doing this. And so we're really excited about these touch points because what we've learned across all these transactions is when you have clear expectations, you have communication that's built in up front, the transaction goes way smoother. And that's where we start to have our success. Alex, do you have any, um, you've been doing a great job with this, but have you, do you have any additional comments to make on how we're setting this process up? I think, you know, when you have a lot of people that have uh, maybe their first large investment into the Kansas city market, you know, there's, there's a lot to know, not necessarily. A, I mean, yes, there's a lot to know about Kansas city. Don't get me wrong. Every little sub market and even neighborhood is very important. 
but just you know knowing that we have local lenders here in Kansas City that can get you exceptional rates that you really can't you probably can't get in other states because they have different debt to income ratios right you know knowing that we have exceptional relationships with property managers that these aren't just people that you know we make money off of or whatever these are just referrals that we trust and we use for our own stuff yep and so i think that's important for when you look at coming into the market coming off the shelf and buying retail or even somebody's uh, off market deal, you don't really get the whole process. I've heard a lot of times from other brokers like, Oh, your, your client is, you know, so-and-so I, I wish I would have spent more time with them. I didn't know that they were serious about buying. Well, I think that we know what buyers expect because we are buyers ourselves. That's right. And so we put them into the right process and to get it closed out. That's the key is identifying a property making sure they're doing it correctly in terms of all the due diligence and then getting it closed out, getting across the finish line, even in today's crazy world. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that. So with that being said, we've got a couple properties, one that we sent out without talking about last week, but it's a new listing of mine. I actually represented the buyer on this last year. He went in forced appreciation, renovated some the property, placed some tenants in the, in the building as well, and has increased the NOI through uh, short-term rentals. So this is 901 and 903 Westport Road, which is a two-story turnkey mixed-use property. You know, these mixed-use properties are interesting because not only are you getting diversification from income because you have retail and short-term rental lease, you have some residential, you have options. So say, you know, during COVID, you don't think the short-term rental game is going to go very well, go find a, a long-term tenant and that's fine. What we've actually seen on this property is during COVID, this property has actually increased on the occupancy and the NOI has gone up really well. And that's mostly due to just the positioning of the location of the asset. And so this is a really cool property. It has some diversification of income with the retail being on the main level and the short-term rentals upstairs. So if you're looking to get into the short-term rental game or you want to convert them back to long-term rentals, you know, that's up to you. That's your prerogative. But it was short, it was long-term rentals when we actually went in and, and purchased it. And it just performed really well. And it's in an area called Westport, which, you know, Westport is, you know, a very, uh, what I'll call exciting and um, uh, popular entertaining, entertainment and dining district. I've spent way too many times before I met my wife you know, really late nights down in Westport. And, uh, you know, you can, it, this, this assets, you know, located very well. And I think from a long-term perspective, this thing's only going to appreciate. We don't really talk about appreciation very much in Kansas city, but Westport's definitely one of those areas that you buy and you hold and you, and you can, you know, really force that appreciation, not only through increasing the NOI, but you're going to get some of that location appreciation as well. And, you know, you might ask why he's selling, this guy loves to flip, man. He, he's, uh, I, I've, I've watched him over the last two years, you know, buy properties, get in really quick. And even though his margins are somewhat thin, he likes, to, he likes the deal. He likes to, you know, transfer up. And so he's been on this, this whole kind of um, what I'll call trajectory of, of buying small and then adding some value and then continuing to trade up. And he really is looking to take that next step into the multifamily world as well. So, that's one property that I think that people should take a look at. It's uh, $1.19 million. Uh, it's 7,600 square feet. Uh, you know, it, it's going to be at stabilization right around a 7% cap rate, which, you know, in Westport is really great. So if you're looking for something that's a little different than our usual kind of multifamily asset, this is for you. I think it's a really cool property. Any, any other thoughts on Westport or this deal? Yeah, when you think about Kansas City in terms of hot areas and with real appreciation going on you've got westport country club plaza and mm -hmm. downtown so this is definitely a top three location from that and i do love the mixed use aspect of it because it helps get you into other asset types and it also has really good cash flow so if you're going man i only want multifamily, but someday it'd be cool to own some retail or something else this is that style property that you can get your feet wet in it, see what the triple net leases are like, yep. see what the location does for you. And it's just a great little piece to get started in uh, a great location with the retail aspect of things. Absolutely, man. The second property is, is a unique one. You know, it's traded a few different times from broker to broker. 
you know, and I'll be upfront. I was with a client under contract for this, this project. This is called the Windscape Apartments. Uh, who has the listing now? Uh, I believe it's CBRE. Okay. CBRE has the listing now. When we were under contract, area real estate advisors, advisors had it. You know, the only reason this project has, did not go to close was there is an internal service road. Um, basically the road that you use to get into the property without the owner knowing it, it went up for auction and some Colorado investor bought it thinking that he also bought all of the multifamily. <laughs> and we could not get the title cleared to get the loan because we could not buy the property. Well, even if we bought the road back, the, the current owner of the road had the opportunity to come back and buy that road. And so it was just a, it was a weird title thing that kind of happened. I love, love, love this location of this property. It's 68 units, 17 fourplexes, kind of all positioned right around this, this road um, in Parkville, Missouri, which is just north of the river. And Parkville is a, uh, is a great area. It's got great school districts, a lot of families, uh, very blue collar, just kind of good, good location. Crime is super low in Parkville, close enough to downtown where folks can get there or to the Northland. You know, it's, and so it's a stabilized asset. You know, it has a little, you know, rental upside. We'll say a little, probably not a ton. We're not going to try to sell you on, you know, you can go in there and push up 25, 35%, but it does have some really nice layouts. The buildings look good. And the current owner has done a really good job you know, upkeeping the property. And so uh, they're currently mom and pop, you know, managing this and I, I've met them and they've done a great job, but I think that there might be an opportunity to uh, bring the management down just a little bit as well. So, um, you know, we've got the, we've got the information on the, the Windscape apartments. It's a 6% cap rate on uh, the current NOI. So if you're looking at, you know, something that's stabilized, you need to trade into a, a nice performing product, you could probably put really strong debt on this, I would say, um, you know, probably close to between three and a half and, you know, 4%, maybe even lower if you go the agency route. I think you've got a really great opportunity here. So, um, you know, I think that the Windscape Apartments can be a good, uh, a good opportunity. I have already been through, uh, you know, inspections on this whole property. So I've got an inspection report. It's from earlier this year. So, you obviously probably want to get that updated a little bit, but we've got a lot of information on this uh, apartment complex. I don't know when the call for offers is, but I do think that, you know, it's, it's probably going to go, um, you know, somewhat quickly. And if I can remember right, Alex, this project was priced somewhere around, well, I don't know what the current NOI is. It's increased a little bit, but uh, we, we, the whisper price around this, let me check my, my notes really quickly is somewhere between 4.5 and $4.7 million. So that's kind of the, the, uh, the, the price range we're talking about on this project. That's great, man. I like the location a lot, you know, being next to a university and the river, uh, you know, great school district. I think you're going to have a mix of probably maybe a, a couple college students, families, you know, just every, everything that, that gives you great yep. stable income because people want to live in Parkville with the uh, top schools in the metro. So this will be an easy one to keep full at all times. And, uh, you know, as a solid buy for entry into the market. Yeah, absolutely. So that's all we've got for you this week. Continue to check our deal flow. We've got some great market commentary going on. Alex and I are really excited because we're starting to bring some more off-market properties. So make sure you're, you're checking the sheet. Uh, Alex went under contract on three different properties last week. I imagine we're going to do the same this week. We've got uh, some walkthroughs on a 71-unit apartment yeah. complex, which is really exciting mm -hmm. out in Warrensburg that we're going to be doing. Um, and, you know, just stay in touch. You know, if you want to learn more about the process that we've put together, Again, we can share that what to expect document. Hopefully we'll have that out sometime either this week or early next week, um, you know, to, to kind of set expectations for folks. But the initial, what I'll call um, adoption of that has been really good, wouldn't you say? Oh my gosh, yeah. I think that, that we're, all, we're really having great success with the 1031 clients, even repeats on, you know, we've had some people come through that have, have transacted within the past or back for round two and three. So it's yep. a successful system. Well, I'm excited. We're, we've got, you know, three months really 
the rest of the year to kind of get stuff taken care of. So again, if you're interested in, you know, getting into Kansas city and getting a deal done, you know, I'd say the next two to three weeks, really, unless you're okay with a short time frame, really is the, is the time that we need to be able to do a full due diligence kind of underwriting and uh, transaction process for you. Alex, any pairing or last comments for the, for the listeners? Just go Chiefs. Go Chiefs. Well, thank you guys so much again for tuning in to another episode of the Kansas City Multifamily Minute where Alex Olson and Logan Freeman are bringing you off-market deal flow. We're bringing you market commentary on a regular basis, and we're coaching you on how to get transactions over the finish line. So tune in again for another episode next week. And make sure if you're interested in Kansas City, you get on our calendars because we are here for you. We're advocating for the buyer in the transaction. Thank you, guys. Until next week, see you soon.